you guys know we've talked about this a lot. Recruiting in the state of Florida is one of the names of this game. There is a lot of talk out there about a lot of things. The most important ongoing story in college football to me is not NIL. It is not expanding the playoff. It is not anything to do with the transfer portal. It is the ongoing in-state talent drain from Texas and to a larger degree, the state of Florida. Alabama, to give you a comparison here, has pulled more five-star kids out of the state of Florida since 2016 than Florida, Miami, and Florida State combined. Allow me to repeat for those of you all the way in the back over there. The University of Alabama, MapQuest says they're located in Tuscaloosa. The University of Alabama has pulled more five-star players from Florida since 2016 than the big three combined. And it's not close. It's nine to six. That's a big story, okay? Likewise, I think the best regulator on this sport has nothing to do with expanding the playoff. The best regulator on this sport is not NIL, and the best regulator on this sport is not the transfer portal. If you want balance, you have to have the big three in Florida and Texas and Texas A&M in Texas and Southern Cal and the state of California heaping a majority of their in-state talent home. It's just that simple. Do you understand the two-fold alteration of college football that brings? Not only do you get traditional powers, or what should be traditional powers, in the big three in Florida, Texas, Texas A&M, Southern Cal, not only do they improve themselves, but can you imagine watching Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama without all the talent from those three states on their roster? How different does the last five, ten years of college football look? How different would the next five or ten years of college football look? So it's more pronounced in Florida, which is the reason I want to focus on it a little bit here. And so Manny Navarro and G. Allen Taylor did a wonderful job on The Athletic. This is still on the front page of college football over there if you want to go take a look at it. They obviously took some time on this. They went and they found 10 coaches and scouts, all of whom have been there at least a decade, right there on the ground in the Florida high school scene. And they shared some very general themes. So since you're anonymous, you can say whatever you want to. Sounds like some of these guys, especially Coach Seven, would say whether he wanted to, whether he was anonymous or not, but they shared some general themes. There's going to be some negativity in this, but I want to try and balance it out because it was not all negative. I mean, these high school coaches, if anything, it's in their best interest to see the big three in Florida succeed. Most of these guys, make no mistake, they're pulling for Manny Diaz. They're pulling for Mike Norvell. They're pulling for Dan Mullen. They want those schools to succeed. They don't want to be sending these in-state kids to Clemson and Columbus and Tuscaloosa, but they're also not going to prevent them from doing it if that's where the best opportunity lies for them to advance themselves. And that is and has been over the past few years the current state of college football. So here's what I wanted to do. I'm going to read you some of these quotes. If you want to see the entire thing, uh, it's obviously it's behind a paywall. It's over at The Athletic, uh, but it's really, really good. Some of the general themes here, let's start with Florida State. And this is understandable because it's a brand new staff. A lot of the coaches talked about them being very professional. A lot of the coaches talked about the Florida State staff having their ducks in order. They're, they're very organized, but they're still feeling themselves out. And I say Florida a lot, but if you're familiar with Florida, there are several geographical recruiting territories, one of which is not like the other is not like the other. I mean, if you're talking about the Panhandle versus Tampa versus Dade County, these are three different worlds. And so if you're Mike Norvell, you can only do one thing at a time. You can only do one day at a time. So they're still trying to familiarize themselves with the different recruiting scenes in Florida, which is to be understood, but they've gotten good early returns. These are good things in this piece that are being said anonymously about Florida State and their efforts by high school coaches. Miami, there were also very, very good returns about Miami. In fact, I would say woven throughout this story, the best consensus feedback was for the staff at Miami, which is ironic, and a lot of you would think that's ironic following recruiting right now, because Miami is not exactly performing at the highest level in the world in the current cycle. But Manny Diaz has commented on this and said, well, that's okay, we're going to make our noise at the end. Well, that's fine, because I'm just going to bookmark it, and I'm going to revisit that at the end. If Miami is still floating outside the top 30 at the end, it's inexcusable. Right now, it is what it is. As for Florida... This is where you're going to get the most criticism because I think Florida staff is the most polarizing. They've been around the longest. Uh, they've had the most success. They're the best program in Florida right now. And so Dan Mullen is a very unique, very eccentric guy. He's going to be either a love him or hate him type of guy. 
So there were more probably negative quotes per capita in this story about Florida and Dan Mullen than there were about any other coaching staff. But I don't think that that's a direct indication that Florida's got the third best coaching staff in the state. Far from it, in fact, because what was talked about was Mullen being more selective. They're not as ultra aggressive on the recruiting trail, but what they do is they trust their evaluations. A lot of these high school coaches talked about the fact that Mullen is not scared of going and recruiting football players. If that means they got two stars or five stars next to their name, if they've evaluated them, they do. And this is what you hear pretty universally. They trust their in-house evaluations. But I do want to give you some quotes. I'm going to give you a few for each school because this is stuff that can't be said a couple of years from now. A couple of these staffs, especially Florida State staff, still brand new. So you give them a little bit of a grace period. I still feel like Manny Diaz and his staff are kind of sliding into the scene there. Not Manny, but remember his first year is not like his second and third year. His first year, they made some staff hires that he realized year one they needed to overhaul. Rhett Lashley, for instance, was not there year one. He's the offensive coordinator there now. How about these, co- these anonymous, I want to say anonymous, coach quotes. On Florida, for example, an anonymous coach number seven, extra saucy coach number seven, he said, I never spoke to anyone on the phone in the spring. It was text messages. They asked me things like, who you got? It doesn't seem like they're interested in Jacksonville. I would guess this guy's coaching near Jacksonville. And he says, that's why you see a lot of our kids fly the coop. That's why Jacksonville is not Gator territory anymore and why Miami has come in here and gotten some really good players. I don't know if staff turnover is the issue. It's changed three times with Mullen in our area. Again, unless it's a situation where you have a kid they really want, there's not a bunch of networking going on. Another coach said, it's a little more exclusive at Florida. It doesn't seem like they cast a wide net. They used to do the mega camp stuff. Now they're really selective. It makes for less work. It has a little bit of arrogance to it. Yet another coach said, things have changed a lot because they do a lot of recruiting through Twitter. It's been over a year since I spoke to a coach from Florida. Lastly, coach number one said, I don't think Florida recruits South Florida. They're not good at it. Maybe that's by design. Maybe that's their strategy. Some of the coaches down here think they're taking a more national approach to recruiting. My point is, this can be anecdotal. Any one of them could be chalked up to sour grapes. You can't know who this is, so you can't know what the direct attachment is to Florida or whether there's an ax to grind. But I'm telling you, This is the feedback you hear a lot about Florida's recruiting effort right now. It's why I harp on it. I don't harp on it because I'm hating on the Gators. It's the exact opposite. I'd love to see Florida parked in the top three every signing day, and I think it is inexcusable when they're not close to it. See, they float in that 6 to 15 range any cycle, and if you are the Boise State Broncos, you look at that and say, wow, they're knocking it out of the park. Well, no, they're not knocking it out of the park. They're good. Florida recruits good in an area and at a program where you should recruit excellent. I would not, if I were a Florida fan, accept anything less. And my point is, when you got high school coaches in South Florida saying, we don't hear from them very much. In fact, I I would guess their strategy is don't even recruit down here. I don't know that that's what I want high school coaches in my state saying about me. But it wasn't just a Florida bash fest. How about Florida State? Coach number five said, this group at Florida State, more professional, much more transparent with you. They're just not as active as Florida is. Okay, well, there you go. One for the Gators. Maybe the Tampa area is something they don't want to do. I don't know. Now, this was said by a couple of coaches talking about Florida State and talking about how they haven't been active in Tampa. Look, my guess is they just haven't learned or haven't developed the strategy to attack the Tampa area yet. Because there are other areas where you read coaches talking about how they've, they've already gotten in there. And we've already heard from them more, even though they're newer, than we have that Florida staff. Another coach on Florida State. FSU's had three head coaches in five years. They don't seem to have that drive to get into my area and win a lot of battles. Yet another coach, this time a scouting type, said, I think they've got a problem in Florida. They don't really have much of a footprint in Tampa. There's the Tampa theme again. I don't think they've got a footprint in a lot of areas. I think they're comfortable in areas they usually go to. To me, I think it's a little early to talk like that about Florida State staff. I know it sounds like I'm stumping for them. I don't have a dog in this. I promise you, I don't have a dog in this fight. I'd love for all of them to finish top five. The math works out. There is room. But I think it's early to say that about the Florida State staff only because I think it's trying to drink water from a fire hydrant when you walk in there, given the circumstances they walked in under last year, and tell you, all right, learn your entire roster, get ready for a season, we're going to take spring from you, you're really going to get an abbreviated version of fall camp, 
Also, I'm going to need you to learn every geographical recruiting territory in Florida, learn every coach, learn every high school staff, yada, yada, yada. There's just not enough time. They haven't had enough time to do it yet. So I give them somewhat of a pass there. Now, how about Miami? Miami, I think there was a lot of mixed feedback, which indicates to me Miami has been in some of these schools and they haven't been in some of the other schools. You could tell where they've been. For example, why don't you take a guess along with me if Miami has recruited coach number two school? Coach number two said, I'd say they're very lackadaisical or very laid back. They're not as aggressive as others. You'll have to wait until signing day to see if that approach works. Okay, that's kind of what a lot of people are saying about Miami's approach right now this year. But then juxtapose that to the very next coach who said, I think they're pretty aggressive. They've done a really good job in the past of getting kids on campus, whether it's junior day or whatever it is. They've always recruited our kids hard. Well, this just screams to me they've been in one school and hadn't been in the other school. Coach number 10 said they do a good job. They're going to get our guys before anybody else. If I've got a dude on our, on our uh, roster, they get to them before Ohio State or Michigan or Alabama. So these were some of the anonymous quotes. Again, that's like a fraction. This thing goes on forever. That's a fraction of the quotes. But here's one thing I wanted to stress. One of the most lazy go-to arguments I hear out of the state of Florida is, well, when the big boys come down here and take our players, well, they're just outbidding us. They're just paying more. Uh, this is, in a lot of ways, pure fantasy, but in other ways, it is the most over-dramatized and overused talking point in all of recruiting. Now, here's what I didn't just say. I didn't just say every recruiting effort for a kid that leaves the state is squeaky clean. That's not what I said. But I'm also telling you it's not some cash fest. It's not some auction block where the highest bidder is walking out of the state with your talent and you're just folding. You're saying, yep, I went as high as I'm going to go. Uh, that is, again, message board fantasy world. That's not how this scene's actually working. But if you don't want to take my word for it, I want you to take note. If you go and read this piece on The Athletic, they asked every single one of these coaches at the high school level and every single one of these scouts, they said, point blank, is that what's causing the disparity? Is money exchanging hands, illegal benefits, is that what's causing kids to leave the state? Not a single one of them even indicated. They weren't even so much anonymously as willing to indicate that that was playing a factor. Now, a few of them said, I hear things, but none of them even said they had direct knowledge of it. So here's what I'm asking. What's more plausible? Is it more plausible that through research on the Internet, you have uncovered a treasure trove of information that singularly explains the recruiting tilt in Florida or could these guys maybe know a little bit more, and it's just that other staffs are out working them, and they're offering a better product? Because now, the last thing I wanted to mention is when these folks with The Athletic asked these coaches to compare the in-state recruiting efforts to the best out-of-state recruiting efforts, there was not a negative thing said. Todd Bates from Clemson, or Brent Venables from Clemson, or Nick Saban coming in there, Tony Alford from Ohio State, uh, Juwan, Juwan Sider from Penn State got a lot of love in this piece, Corey Raymond from LSU, James Coley's at AM. Those guys were spoke about more glowingly than anyone spoke about the in state coaches in Florida right now. And again, this is not a biased article. If anything, the biases for these high school coaches is tilted towards the state of Florida. They want them to succeed. They want them to be good. You can tell, even though they didn't outright say it, the theme woven throughout this entire piece is that of frustration that the high school coaches keep having to send their kids a thousand miles north to play at the best program position to get them where they want to be at the next level. Because these guys aren't leaving and getting underdeveloped. One of them said, I was watching a national championship game recently, and Alabama put a secondary on the field entirely made up of South Florida kids. Like, on what planet... Should I be okay with that happening? If I'm any one of a fan of these big three, they did have good things to say about Central Florida and Gus Malzahn too, so I did want to put that out there. So that's a really good piece. I would strongly encourage you to go check that out over on The Athletic.